just fine on five to six hours of sleep. Originally, he was a professional archaeologist and then transferred uh, his business into a kind of a boutique antique dealer um, and dabbled in that market for a while. He still has a lot of contacts um, in the city and outside the city as well. But now, because of certain economic factors, he's decided to take a more stable job. Working at the agency, it's not by the hour, so he still has kind of some flexibility. So he can wake up, do some research, read some of his books to find out some occult pieces he's looking for, check in with the office at nine, and then go uh, meet with the team and go research the next case that they're working on there. He still manages to finish his office duties early and head home for what seems like a relaxing early evening, but usually it's more research into the night or contacting people that he's made deals with to keep one finger going in the antique um, and antiquities black market in the city. That's pretty much a typical day for Declan. Cool. Okay. Tell us about Oren's typical day, John. Richard should probably tell you about Oren's days. Oh, sorry, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry, Richard. Um, well, it depends on the day. Like, he has a routine, but it's usually based on a week, right? So Monday is going to be uh, exercise, go to the office, weapons maintenance at night. You know, and then Tuesday is going to be cardio and then work his day job and then maybe vehicle maintenance uh, at night. So it's going to be depending on whatever the day is, but he's very routine in that nature. He's still maintaining that almost military uh, time clock. He is not adjusted to civilian life yet. Okay, so still, what? So t tell me what he does when the sun comes up or before the sun comes up. He's well, still real military. Yeah, he's going to exercise. He's going to do PT. So he's either going to do, you know, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's you know, muscle building, cardio, uh, calisthenics, and then Tuesday, Thursday, maybe it's cardio. He goes for a run, uh, but it's going to be some form of exercise in the morning, and then he'll shower, eat, uh, get dressed, go to work and then perform his work duties all day once work's done depending on the day that's what needs to be done does he need to do weapon maintenance vehicle maintenance does he need to clean does he need to have a you know cleaning party and clean the the warehouse does he need to uh, you know, then he's going to have a night where he irons his clothes for the week and polishes his shoes for the week and uh, there'll be a couple, and then maybe Friday, Saturday night, he goes out and has a nice dinner and a drink. But Excellent. he's going to be be very routine oriented. Excellent. All right, what's a typical day like for Greer? Um. So I think Greer, as soon as she wakes up, she probably um checks her phone for any notifications, um, any text messages she might have missed, anything she wants to bother answering. Um, before, like, doing basic, like, getting ready, head off to work, wherever that may be at the current time. Um, so I suppose it depends on what work it is. She's worked a lot of like third shift. She's worked um, day jobs, just wherever pays the most. And currently that seems to be kind of this weird new uh, like insurance thing. She hasn't really done anything in there, but she managed to talk her way in something or other. She managed to nail the interview, but that's just par for the course um usually she'll just 
go about her work day and then whenever she has free time, um, like after the day's done, she's the type to um, head off to like a nightclub or a bar. Um, just to kind of like people watch, um, see who approaches her. Um, after she's had her fill of that, she just heads back home and starts it all over again. Cool. All right. So for what we've got going on here, let's say the company has uh, arranged for you to have an office that is um, kind of a divey office. Looks like it's not a, a high rent area. And this is where you're working at for this week. <laughs> so, so you're all meeting at this office um, for now. It may be that this could be your permanent work area. You don't have just like cubicles. Um, so it looks just more like a normal office. Now, the um, the latest um, message, like so, you have a a conference call from someone who let, what, let's get, let's figure out what his name is. The person who is your Charlie and Charlie's Angels. You never actually met the guy, but he's like your manager. He's the guy that gives you things that you have to do. Um, or tells you what the case file is and has it sent to you, whether it's through an interdepartmental vacuum tube or or <laughs> whether it just shows up by delivery guy or, you know, some courier or what have you. So um, let's let's get his name. What is that guy's name? Mr. Jones. It just he'll use a real generic name. Yeah. Okay. Like Mr. Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And he never discloses his first name. He's just Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. He's the manager. All right. So um then uh you will you will have gotten a message from Mr. Jones. So tell me about um why, why don't we go ahead and begin the scene, let you just role play, ease into your characters a little bit. You are all there and you have a chance to uh, kind of just talk about whatever is going on, whatever you have going on or a a anything else that's coming up. Like, let's begin with uh, Greer and then we'll go on to uh, Greer. You can choose someone to talk to. Uh, and begin role playing, kind of just sink into character a little bit. This is a chance to kind of just settle in. Go ahead. All right. Um... Hmm. So I think just like with the crew being generally really kind of new, like it's just a very vague kind of acquaintance situation. Uh, I am going to, real quick, can I roll something real quick? What do you, um, just like to decide. Oh, you want to help I, yourself decide something? I don't care. Yeah. You can use those dice at the bottom of the chat if that helps. All right, um, then I think, oh, my character sheet keeps popping up. Um, Greer is going to just pick one of the people at random, um, being the one next to the window, and just kind of move over. Okay. So, hell of a place, huh? 
It wouldn't be my first place for a base of operations. It's not exactly cleanly, but it'll work. Um, <laughs> she just offers her hand. Um, my name's Greer. I suppose we'll be working together. Oren. Yeah, Oren Murphy. Pleased to meet you. Um, um. And I... Do you shake your hand? Yeah, I will shake your hand, and then casually I'm going to keep doing my uh, walk with the perimeter. <laughs> um, would, you, like... would you let go of the hand first? Yeah, yeah, I'll shake your hand. <laughs> release the hand and then continue my walk with her. Um, with the handshake, she like quickly kind of like glosses over the very like surface level thoughts that um, Oren might be having right now. Oren thinks this is a death trap, and that at any second, there will be gangs of marauders coming down on us, and I don't have enough weaponry to protect all of you at this point. Yeah, that's about right. She, she just kind of looks out the window. I mean, there's probably like an old guy out there with a hot dog stand, but I'm hyper-protective, so... He's probably boiling children in that hot dog stand, for all I know. Yeah, I think now that her attention's kind of, like, been pointed outside, she's going to, like, take in the area. Okay. What about Declan? I couldn't help but overhear their conversation, so I'm going to kind of approach and see if I can catch her eye. Um... Hi. Did you say Greer is your name? Yes. Um, oh. Greer Rodinea. And she, uh, like, offers her hand. And uh, I shake her hand. Oh, oh. Hi, I'm Declan Lestrange. Nice to meet you. Um, just on instinct, she, like, brushes over, like, surface thoughts. Uh, I'm just curious about what's going on in this building and who she might be and who the kind of paranoid gentleman is circling the perimeter of the office might be. Okay. Yeah, this se seems to be a bit of a weird situation, but I'm hoping everyone here is as confident as they look. Well, I'm very good at what I do. And I'll trust you on your word. Mm -hmm. I'm in research. Uh, I was hired by the agency to, to do research in case there's any kind of problem or something they can't solve with their cases. So what, what are you going to be doing in this office? places with people um anytime that we need to speak with anyone i have my ways of getting information at least getting people on our good side excellent well i hope you're as good at your job as i am at mine nice to meet you ditto I guess it's okay. fine. It, it is. Yes, yeah. sir. Hmm. All right. So after a few minutes of that, at least one of your notices sit in the corner like he's always been there. A person who is so easy to look, uh, to look over that you haven't noticed that he's been there the whole time. He's holding a briefcase tightly seems very wound up he goes um he hello 
Hello, mate. Hello. I'm um, I'm David. I'm David. I'm David. It's nice to see you all. Good to meet you, so, David. I'm Orin. Nice to meet you, so, David. I'm Declan. So we are the team. Yes. It is written all over his face that he doesn't know how he actually fits into this. So as you begin to examine that, we're going to do um, one more thing that is a very interesting part of the game to tie everyone together. So on your uh, sheets, there is a tab for juice, help, and hurt. And so what I want you to do, we're going to go around, if you use your theme books. So you will reference your, uh, for example, Greer, you're going to go to your Bastion theme. And at the end of the Bastion theme or subversion theme or divination, pick one, uh, or even your personality theme, any of those themes at the end of those themes, it talks about crew relationships and gives you uh, two, three or four different things to choose from. Just randomly pick one of those and read it out loud to us. Greer, let's start with you. Or actually, Daniel, let's begin with your character. Pick one of your themes and go down to the crew relationships part of your theme. Pick one of those and read it out loud for us. And then let's figure out how you do, because you're sizing up, trying to figure out how you fit in. This would be mm -hmm. one way that you'll you'll have fit, fit in. All right, I guess I would be using maybe something like divination. Okay. <sighs> Crew relationships. Let's see. Oh man, <laughs> Divination is really, really nice for those. <laughs> okay, pick one. Read um, it out loud. Wait, Britain. Um. All right, so. I'm thinking you use your powers to learn the shock and secret about one of them without their knowledge. If it made me feel closer, take a hell point. If you were disgusted or horrified, or if you plan to use it against them, take a hurt point. Okay. He's got a secret. Who hasn't got a secret? Right. So why don't you pick someone that you've kind of figured a secret out about? Maybe it's Declan, or maybe it's Oren, or maybe it's Greer. Um, right. Oh. Um, uh, let's pick one. I'm gonna, let's, go, let's go with Declan. All right, Declan, what's a secret that, that he would know? Because I'm scared a, of, um, uh, or basically. <laughs> <laughs> a, a secret he... Well, that he wouldn't know that that he has found out about using his powers. Right. So, so, so it's, it's he he can understand a secret about me. Is that yes. what you're asking? Correct. Um, probably a secret about me he would know is that I have broken the law numerous times <laughs> in the black market, buying and selling antiquities for fun and profit. Uh, let me just say that that is not shocking at all for this company. <laughs> they probably knew that already, and that's not going to work. So go deeper. <laughs> uh, a, a, a secret more shocking than that? Uh, yeah, something really bad about... that you did to get some of that stuff. What the fuck just happened? I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Oh, uh, maybe one of the antiquities uh, I purchased illegally was connect was involved directly in, uh, like like one of the dealers was murdered, and I was kind of a suspect in that. I didn't do it, but I know who did do it, and if I tell them who did it, like it's one of those things where I can't tell the police who did it, or I'll put my life in danger. But I didn't do it, but they think I did it. Something like that like something that brings more um, characters into place so I like yeah that. yeah that, that's a good one I like that good. all right so now you have to decide 
is that something that you're going to ally with him or bond with him over in some fashion? Or are you maybe going to use it against him sometime in the future? Not going to use it against him. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not brave Nat enough for that. <laughs> Naturally. But... Um, so, that's sort of kinship. I mean, that's very far from my milieu, let's just say. Okay. So I'm going to say it's a hurt. Cause All it's, right. It's, it's a... going in the mental blackmail file. You might use it against him sometime <laughs> in the future. All right, so make a note about that in your hurt so that it's clear maybe what that's what that hurt is about. So when you use the hurt, um, we can anchor that into that's why the hurt exists. All right. All right. I'm just going to say that uh, one second. Uh -huh. I cannot see Greer in characters, and I can't um, use her. Like, uh, I don't have her name in hurt or help. Yeah, so you have to add it. It doesn't automatically show up. Uh, and the way yeah. these character sheets work in the Foundry, you just hit a plus uh, I think for he, help. She still doesn't show up in the crew, though. Oh, she doesn't? Is that she what doesn't. you're saying? Uh, That's what I'm saying. Why? What is wrong with you? Oh, I, I don't know. know, but it sounds shady to me. I don't I know, know if she should be That's here. That's what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> She's a spy. I know what it is. It is ownership needs to be set to observer. That's why. Now, if you close and reopen and then do it, uh, it should show up. Yes? Yes. Okay, I think that works. All right, then next, uh, Greer, let's have you pick one of your themes, go to the bottom of that theme book and look for the crew relationships, pick one of those randomly, read it out, and let's see if it fits with anyone in the group. Maybe you pick who it is and then they can decide if it fits them or not. So this is a collaborative effort to determine these relationships. If the other person doesn't want to accept that relationship for their character with you, then they can decline and then you either ask someone else or pick a different relationship and see how that goes. So it's this is a negotiation. Hmm. I suppose going to um, true relationships on the personality. Okay. Um, call it... Uh, being a people person doesn't necessarily seem like Olin's wheelhouse if he's going around and kind of assuming that people at hot, in hot dog stands may or may not be there to murder us. Would this be a valid kind of takeaway just from this, like, I guess, like, intro? You're saying that he's not a people person? Um, not necessarily. More focused on, like, um, I guess, like, protection of the self rather than, like, being a, um, like, a social butterfly, as it were. We could definitely be perceived as being protective of self. But if you were digging deeper into his motives, you'd be noticed. You would find that he's more protective of of you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, like um, a closed social circle versus like going out to absolute strangers oh, and oh, striking oh no, he's gonna be type. no, he's definitely if you're not on the team, you're the enemy kind of guy. So he's gonna be very few friends, and but the friends he have are very close. Yeah. And, um, so which one did you choose under crew relationships? Uh, that would be the personality of one of them seems to be the exact opposite of yours, even if they don't have it as a theme. Right. If it makes it easier for your personality to shine or for you to be yourself, take a help point on them. If it comes into conflict with your personality, take a hurt point on them. Okay. And so how did you define that then? The personality of 
Declan? Is that who you were picking on? No, Oren. Um, Oren. Okay, so the personality of Oren it seems to be opposite of yours. Does it make it easier for your personality to shine, or does it come into conflict? Which did you? Which way did you go with it? Um, prop. It'd probably be positive in that she okay. tends to be like very, like intentionally going out on a limb a lot socially, and so to have like sort of like solid backup that isn't necessarily in that same vein would probably be. Good. So then take a point of help for Oren and put that on your sheet because that's juice. So these helps and hurts, by the way, and you probably don't really have a grasp on how juice works yet, but these can be used to create a tag or do something with status or so. So they're, they're ways that you can apply it to change the game or you just you basically you use uh, um, these juices to create a tag. That's the most common use for them that someone else can use or that you can use because of it. Um, and so it adds a tag you can use. It's a, it's a temporary one time little tag that you can add to something or subtract from something. You can also make it a minus one to someone's role. Like, yeah, so while he's trying to show off, I kind of put my foot out and maybe trip him up a little bit. So that's a minus one to your role, that kind of thing. Um, makes for interesting um, interactions and um, variety. All right, who is next? Declan, have you done? You haven't done one yet. So Declan, no, pick one I'm of your not. themes. Let's go to the bottom for career relationships. I uh, I think the one that, that makes most sense already given the situation is... Um, uh, one of them is blown away by the vastness and diversity of your abilities. Ask them how it makes them feel. If it fascinates them, take a hell point on them. If it confuses them and they're weirded out, take a hurt point on them. I And I think that would make kind of sense directed at, at David. Like he's, he knows some stuff about me. He, so he knows a lot about me. And I, and I think that has already created an interplay and i think that would make sense going that way sure. i just don't know if it fascinates him or, or yeah right. does it help or hurt what do you say david daniel you get he's still there did we muted it? maybe he's muted He's there. He's in trap. The I am muted. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> how long was I muted? Uh, since long we asked we... you the question. All right. I don't remember muting myself. That's me multitasking. Good luck. Um, could you uh, repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, I was saying the the crew relationship from my character. Uh, it says one of them is blown away by the vastness and diversity of your abilities. Ask them how it makes them feel and we already your true relationship was you know th this deep dark secret about me but to know that you have to know a lot about me so you're impressed by my capabilities the question is does it fascinate you or does it confuse and weird you out because if it fascinates you take a help point from on you if it weirds your character out and that's why you're holding the secret you know in reserve then, I'm then gonna say that it, scare, it scares the shit out of me. <laughs> there you go. Say that's a point yeah. of hurt. Yeah. All right, Oren, you're up. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, the the Bastion one. I once protected something very dear to one of them. Um, if they were grateful, take a help point. If they were not, take a hurt point on them. Maybe they have a sibling or a friend that disturbed and um, may or may not have died during the event. Um, that's what yeah, I'm thinking. There you go. That's great. Who's Who wants to grab that? Anyone? Well, screw you guys. I didn't want to play anyway. <laughs> uh, like, like, I have Pick an one. idea for, some, for yeah, something our... that is like... Uh, in different area completely like uh 
like it's not some someone you saved, but maybe something you saved and you somehow kept him from getting fired, <laughs> which is more important for me to me than you know people in some cases maybe. <laughs> but it's not as grandiose, I know. Okay, and let's resolve um, that. How? You... Yeah, is it help or hurt? Oh, definitely help. Okay. All right. And so you cool. decided, what is it that you protected? I have no idea at that point. He said, I'm his <laughs> job, I guess. Uh, I was looking at maybe, you know, like something a little more dramatic, like. I know, you know I know. I was but... protecting somebody's brother and his brother died under my watch kind of thing. Yeah. Um, mm. I was thinking for something a little more dramatic. Um, but yeah, maybe I covered his job one day when he was, I don't know, he was sick or something. No, <laughs> no, no, not, not like that. You're new to the company. It, it would have been something funnier in some way. Uh, but it doesn't have to be me, <laughs> really. It was just a thought that I had and you should like, it's your relationship and you should focus on what yep. what's important to you. So, so what, pick someone what we else. Would do, yeah, so to, to make this a little more focused, what we do is you pick the relationship and then you pick the person you might have that relationship with and describe it to them. And if they agree, there you go. They can give you whether that helps or hurts or whether you think it helps or hurts. Uh, the idea is for you to put it out there and say, I think I would have a relationship with Declan because I once protected um, his little brother, but um, I was in charge of him. I was responsible for him, but um, it didn't go well. And then Declan can go, yeah, that would definitely be hurt, right? Or it would be, yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's so, a good that's a good play. We could go that way. That makes it that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so do you want to do that, Orin? Orin and Declan? No, you let got me, that. I was gonna say since nobody really jumped at that, let me switch it up. Pick another one. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Pick another. Um. So. Um, let's say, I don't know who's, what everybody's mythos is, so I'm just guessing at this point, but, um, maybe like Greer's mythos seems like a modern day version of one of the characters from my legend. Um, if they were a foe in my legend, take a hurt point. If they were an ally or loved one, or if you were the rescuer, take a help point on them. You know, let's do that. We've kind of had this whole week of getting characters together and we haven't really gelled on telling everyone what your character is and give everyone the gist of what you can do. I think it's fair that everyone should know that. Um, I know you're new, you're just forming this group, but what we're trying to do is establish rather than you all meet in a tavern, um, yeah. which is kind of this is you all meet in this dumpy office, what I want is you know each other. Maybe you haven't had a chance to work a lot with each other, but you've worked together in the past or you know each other, you have some other relationship and that binds this crew together, right? That's what we're trying to right. do is glue everyone together in some way. And then when you can have that, then we can move forward from there. So let's just actually just, let's just go around the table. We'll start with David, Daniel, um, tell us a little bit about your mythos, your character, kind of what your abilities are that uh, everyone kind of has then an idea of kind of what you can do. All right, so my name is David Armoire. Um, I am an insurance clerk who is also a Rift of the Fates, the Morris. Um, my uh, mythos abilities are uh, divination which is Lachesis, Expression, which is Clotho, and Adaption, which is Atropos. Uh, Lachesis is a the one who creates the threads. No, sorry, Clotho is the one who creates the, the threads. She is capable of healing, even in the myth, uh, bringing people back to life. Uh, Lachesis is the one who sees the threads and can affect them. She assigns fate and sees it, so she can, she can do those things. And Atropos is the one who cuts the threads. So, uh, well, death. Really. Okay. So 
some of the things that you can do, Lachesis can do kind of read reading the threads of fate. Right. Clothos. The threads. Okay. Yeah. Clothos spin new threads and Atropus cut the threads. Yeah. Okay. Life giver, by the way, I think needs to be a sub tag of another tag. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. So you just need to choose the sub tag of, and then that will stop being bright yellow. Okay. Are we good? Oh, and it's back. Life giver needs to be a. How do I make it? So we just open it up. So if you look at, then we just need to choose sub tag. Is it a sub tag of spin new threads, benevolent visage, or everybody wants peace? Um, spin new threads, I think. Probably. Yeah. All right. All right. I fixed it. All right. Good. Thank you. Uh huh. Oh, that's why it was like that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then the drudge, insurance clerk for the company, too much personal information, numbers, wizard, and must follow procedure. Okay. That's a weakness. Cool. No it one is. needs to know that. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Gre uh, no, Declan. Let's do Declan next. Uh, yeah, Declan's uh, by trade a dubious antiques dealer. Um, kind of, kind of, kind of think the bad guy in the first, um, Indiana Jones movie, but not quite as Belloc. ruthless. <laughs> yeah. <Belloc. laughs> like, like Belloc, but, but without an accent, he's not a friend. He's, you know, he's French descent, but he's American. Alosh. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> um, but he grew up in a very academic household, but you know, he somehow got involved in the seedier side of, of, uh, you know, trading things he's not exactly the it belongs in a museum kind of guy but in his travels at some point he became um the the adaptation mythos of the the god of dreams so lately he's been basically seeing premonitions in his dreams or uh he can has the ability to kind of bend reality around him for a little bit in, in minor ways um and sometimes he thinks it's a dream but then other people will comment so so things around him are are, are very dynamic and fluid <laughs> so to speak um and and that's definitely okay otherwise he's got training and guns yep he's got a lot of ex real life experience of yep. being in rough situations and um and his antiques dealer okay very good so um perfect so have have you picked a help or hurt yet for some uh, I, your, your relationship uh, i don't think i have okay i think then, i thought you had the one with daniel where he knew about your stuff and was impressed with your that's daniel's relationship though oh no, no, no daniel, that was, yeah that was it daniel yeah. knew the oh, secret yeah. about right. declan but declan oh, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we got a hurt. That's what it was. One point of hurt. Okay. So do you know what to do on your character sheet to track that? No. On the juice help hurt tab, there is a hurt and then a plus next to it. You just hit that plus and then you could put who your target is. You pick the other person. Wow, there's all kinds of people on here. All right, I'll yep. have to go fix those. So uh, that's from uh, old characters. So choose, um, I'll, I'll clean that up. I didn't know that was all there. Choose um, David and then choose whether it was help or well, that's actually hurt. So then the amount is one and then just save it. So you're just really kind of just um, marking that and then you can use that later. I wish there was more, you could put more details on it, but they haven't built that in the sheet. We'll re maybe I'll request that and they'll add in a notes field or something. All right. Nice. All right so. And then when you use it, you'll just delete it off your sheet. Got it. Okay. Um, it's just there to track where you have juice. All right. So Declan's done. Greer, you you haven't done one yet, right? Right. Um, oh, she you hasn't. Did, you did she, one. She did one, but she hasn't done her mythos 
description. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mythos. Thank you. Go ahead. Um. So Greer is the. Um. Is the rift for um Galati, who is the um statue from the Pygmalion myth. Um. Oh. As far back as she can remember, um, she's always been the rift for Galati, and um, has sort of slowly developed the powers under that rift from childhood. Um, it started with being able to change her like face and body shape. Um, then it became sort of like. Um, being able to read minds through touch. And then um, in adulthood, she discovered uh, um, her ability to like turn herself into rock. Um, and sort of with this like power set and like a generally um, just being kind of unstable, um, She's taken a hobby out of manipulation. Um, she knows, like, she studied psychology since high school. Um, very good at smelling bullshit. Um, so she just makes a makes funny games out of messing with other people. Um, more so it's that she's like, she's very precise in her use. Um, it's usually to and ends. Gotcha. Like she okay. doesn't necessarily do it for fun more. So she's very like, what can I get out of this? Okay. So basically she can turn into stone, which gives her some invulnerabilities. She, um, yeah. Yeah, um, with the stone, she takes um, less, like, she doesn't take damage from anything that wouldn't affect stone. Like, shooting a statue isn't going to do as much damage as shooting flesh. Um, and whenever she's, um, like, in stone state, um, her biological functions kind of halt. Like she doesn't need to breathe, she doesn't need to eat, she doesn't need to drink, and she's indistinguishable from like a statue itself. Yeah, but she can still move when she's in that state or does she really lock down? Um, like I was sort of back and forth on that. Like initially my idea was that she would be immobile. Um, I wasn't sure, like, it said on Bastion that it could be cumbersome. I could swap that to just straight and mobile. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And when she's in this state, um, she just can't move. If she would need okay. it, if she, but, um... Yeah, so you could shift in and out of it as needed. So if you're gonna use it, for example, to face danger, to try to not take damage from something, you obviously can shift into your mobile state, I mean, your your stone state, and then shift back again. So that would be uh, fine with me. It's just that that may be awkward if you're in the middle of running or, <laughs> or, yeah, or something like that. That's that's what makes it a weakness. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that would be good. Or you're swimming right now, and then you quickly turn to stone, but then you sink. And so... <laughs> So now you gotta swim back up the etc. I, I can see that being good. All right, and then sculpt to perfection. It's a shape shifting ability, very subtle. You can't become a chair, but you can look like other people, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it doesn't change the voice though, which can be a little bit not great. <laughs> Telling, like if you're gonna look like a dude, and then you're like, yeah. hi, and you're like, hmm. All right, got it. Made for you, so you can read minds basically and kind of figure out what uh maybe what you need to be for that person etc okay got it yeah. all right um i didn't go over um declan no, no. <laughs> well we kind of did we kind of, i was like of your tags so you have reality bending it's like your dreams become real you can't tell the difference between them you right. have an influence on the reality around you based on the weirdness of your dreams and often you really can't even control that. 
Right. So if you're going to use those tags, I would say that it wouldn't be necessarily Declan trying to use them. It would be just, this is the way things are happening around me, and I'm just going to try to take advantage of them, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, you have some fairly mundane abilities that are pretty awesome, like you're an excellent shot, you're rugged, and, you know, you understand how to smuggle and you have business connections, etc. cetera. Uh, but you've got some trouble with the black, having done things with the black market. Maybe there's some organized crime that you've been involved with, or maybe the authorities are trying to figure out if it's, if are you really the Pink Panther or, you know, what exactly. you're or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, right. on, have, I'm on a few people's, um, you know, for lack of yeah. a better phrase, shit list. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. All right, so let's look at Oren now. Oren, tell us about your character. Oren is the mythos of Achilles. So, or the writ of Achilles. Rip. He is, um, he's a bastion with immortality uh, because his, since he was dipped in the river Styx, you know, according to legend, uh, that means he has... Uh, the, the River Six actually translates into like loathing of death, so he is immortal. Um, he can't be hurt. Oh, if he's the idea is he's invulnerable to any intentional harm. Uh, if somebody's not oh, trying yeah. to harm him, he gets hurt all the time. He can cut himself chopping an onion, but if somebody throws a knife at him, it'll bounce off. Um, he also like can't get if he gets thrown off a roof. Uh, that's would trigger his invulnerability, but if he fell off the roof because he's a klutz, that would not. Um, also, he does not. He is not invulnerable while he is asleep. Um, he's also an unparalleled warrior because, according to the legend of Achilles, he was hidden among the women for the first 12 years of his life because they were trying to avoid fulfilling the prophecy. And uh, but yet somehow he was still the greatest warrior. <laughs> they had even though he wasn't training with all the other boys so uh that's also the same with orton as well he just can fight really well and has really good physical properties um his defining event was his entire um special ops team was wiped out during a supernatural event that is unexplained he was the sole survivor he's not um he's looking for Basically, to redeem himself by not allowing his new team to die. Um, so, so if you die, you fail him. Um, don't, so don't die. And uh, <laughs> his, don't make me lie. <laughs> Important safety. You're not going to die today. <laughs> You're not going to die today. <laughs> um, but, but that's yeah. that's Orn. That's Orn. Okay, and then he had a defining event that you talked about where that yeah. has that drives him in a different way. Okay, good. Um, so, oh, and you have a lot of equipment that's not approved for home use. Yeah, they, so, I'm not sure they know of that yet. Don't try this at home. Okay. Yeah, don't, yeah. Watch, okay. don't, you know, look, don't touch, you know, no touch. <laughs> Trust, but verify. Trust. And since I still haven't done my help or hurt yet, I'm just going to cheese out with my bastion one and uh i feel as if one of them is the one i am supposed to protect uh so i'm gonna protect uh david and uh take a help point on him oh thank okay. you i wonder why that is what is it about <laughs> david that makes you feel like you need to be um watchful um maybe because uh, maybe he just reminds me of a kid I knew back in the army. You or can I say that he looks helpless. Guy and, he does. You know, if he gets killed, I, I've got to do all the reports. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Um, excellent. Uh, David, tell us about. I mean, Daniel, tell us about David. All right, so oh, wait, David, you, 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 you've kind of done that, but, but I haven't. Yeah, 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 I didn't go deep enough because I was just actually finishing the last touches mm -hmm. of my character shit. Yep. 
Uh, right. So David has been with the company for a while. He is. He was a bookish kid. He was basically like uh, just destined to be an accountant. It was his destiny. Um, since he was since since he was little, and that's what happened. He like did everything by the book. Um, but. And like he was good at it, but for some reason, weird shit just kept happening around him, and it kept him from um, going up the ladder. And he was he would he would get sidelined from everything until he got into the like to this team. But like, there's a lot of weird stuff. He feels like he's in a bit of a dream sometimes. Like he gets that he has those powers, but it's too much, it's overwhelming. He is uh, three um, mythos themes in this, so life, his ability to pursue what's real and what's not is getting kind of tenuous. And everything being real doesn't really help. Cool. All right. Let me look at your sheets real quick. Um, we've got one help. Okay, so Greer has one help on Oren. David has one hurt on Oren, which is interesting because Oren has picked you to be a help to protect. So that's. I thought he was afraid. Of uh, uh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I think that was Declan. I. Yeah. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. All right, and then Declan, My you've bad. got a hurt on David as well. Yeah. So I want you to go around one more time and pick a different character that you're going to have a relationship with. I want two relationships on your sheet. Uh, I don't have Declan on my list for some reason. I got John instead. All right, that's good enough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's uh, again um, start um, at the bottom of my list. Oren, pick someone and choose a, a thing off one of your themes for a crew relationship and pick one of those and let's see if we can work that out. And then we'll get started officially, which has been kind of a so... hodgepodge, chaotic beginning to this, but. Um, Sorry about that, but let's we'll, we'll get focused here. Um, uh, so maybe uh, a lot of mine just don't really fit with newer characters. Um, so maybe uh, one of them was trying to help me get over my defining event and move on. Uh, so maybe it was Declan. Maybe I've known him for a while. Um, if I appreciate it, I can take a help point on him. If I resent his help, I can take a hurt. Maybe the way he goes about trying to help, right? Yeah, yeah. He's a little rough on the edges, maybe. He tells you to suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> or, or his answer is here: drink more whiskey. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like that's a good answer. I like, I like go. that. Okay. And and if I can go next, I've got a good crew relationship that will also go, go the other it. way yep. in that direction. So, it's one of them. That could be Orin once challenged me to kind of push the boundaries and flexibility of my power at a critical moment. Um, and so like, like maybe he challenged me to kind of, you know, I, I confided in him, things aren't exactly what they seem. And he's like, well, test it, push it, you know, otherwise you're going to drive yourself crazy. And, um, or more likely I would have said in that case, you can bring back my old team. There you go, something like going. that. So him pushing me has kind of challenged me to kind of find my edge. Um, so it's kind of a okay. respectful relationship in that way. Perfect. Greer, pick one more. Another one. All right. Um, can you skip over me for a sec? 
Jen, you are ready to give David another relationship? Muted, Mr. Daniel Mute. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, what have, I, what have I got? Let's go with my adaptation thingy. Let's see. Right. <clears throat> so, you think one of them is a one trick pony? Should I go with that? I don't know. One of those blown away. No. Let's go with not adaptation. Let's look at routine stuff. Mm. All right, that's just uh, natural. You think one of them has a penchant for mayhem or drama and could destabilize your routine if you let them? So, who could that be? Say it again. So you, they think, have... you, think, you think one of them has a penchant for mayhem or drama and could destabilize your routine if you let them take a hurt point on them? Well, I mean, that honestly could be me. Uh, you, I, I could take that basically saying that I'm going to be too unprotective of you and I'm going to make you disrupt your routine by trying to follow better. <laughs> are, are you going to try to to train me? <laughs> no, I actually can't. Get up, I can't train you. No, it's more like the fact that, uh, you know, you're going to follow the company line because you're the company man, but sometimes that's detrimental to your, you know, to, to my security training, right? So, and that's going to be disruptive to you, maybe. All right. Sounds good. All right, Shanks, you ready for Greer? Yeah. Um, no. So I think um, one of them makes you feel exposed. You find their powers, abilities, or personality invasive. Take a hurt point on them. I feel like Greer would be really uncomfortable around like people with like divination abilities. And I think. Um, Dave, like David's main thing was like divination. Yes. It's yes. thing. Because of the fates. Yeah. 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 I. So I'll take a hurt with David. Okay. All right. Cool. Oh, lots of hurt going on in this game. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to work that out. All right. So, um, Declan, did you do your second relationship yet? Yeah, I did the one with um with I only Orn. see one on your sheet, that's why I was asking. Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking through the sheets. Yeah. Forgot to put it on the sheet. No, yeah, I did do another one with um Good. with Orin. Perfect. Okay. Um well, this is one of the reasons I like to record sessions to actually go back and rewatch them and take notes, because I really suck at taking notes during the session because I'm trying to stay focused on like others that I'm like spinning plates. So yeah. taking notes is a little bit counterproductive to that. So um, like I'm taking notes and all the plates fall. So um, these initial sessions, I, I actually sit around and think about this stuff and how I'm right. going to fit it into stories as we tell them. So I, it's always a little rough at the beginning for, for me in particular, because it's mostly just gathering information about all these characters and really solidifying those ideas that you have in my own mind. So I can like weave you into the stories, um, thoroughly. Uh, that's just my, that's my GM style. So that's or MC style. So, um, I think I'm only missing secret pain. So like, the, the two questions that are at the beginning of your character, why did your mythos choose you? 
So something maybe about your character that you think the mythos chose you to become their rift or and and your secret pain. What is truly um, a a pain in your character for a uh, like a, a misery or a pain? In this campaign, um, pain does play a, a heavy role, but that's oftentimes a, a motivator or a demotivator for your character to have to face their pain or, you know, to get down to that, you know, like, what what have you not gone to therapy about that you <laughs> refuse to address? That's your secret pain, right? Um, so send that to me in your in the private chats in the Discord. And that way it can be your secret. Those will come out during the game. Just prepare. I'm going to ask you if you're, you will end up discussing them or having a conversation about them or something. But that's why I want you to be prepared to have one. You don't have to reveal it right now. Okay. Got it. All right. Does everyone have a help or a hurt on two different people? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think, I think then that's that we're probably ready to go. Okay, so you are gathered uh, in this temporary office. You've both kind of arrived at different times. It, regardless of the order that you've arrived and what you're saying. Daniel, I just need a picture for your character to work on that. And oh. I will, uh, and I'll paste I'll it work in there. On that. So you're not a hooded mystery man. Um, I don't know. I think it was working for him. <laughs> 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 like nobody noticed he was there. Exactly. Uh, so a, a a case file had sh shows up. It is uh, delivered by just some generic courier guy. Generic and courier guy yeah, gets the shakedown. And <laughs> I'm sure it must have the appropriate security phrase. So. <clears throat> That's right. It's written on the outside of the package, so he he knows what to say. He wrote it there himself. That's. An egregious mistake. Orin just shakes his head and face palms. Oh. <clears throat> so you get this envelope, and basically it uh, describes the washboard, which is actually just a couple of buildings away from this office in downtown. So if we go back to the city map, I'm going to move everyone back there. The washboard is right here. Can you see me pinging the map? Yep. Okay. So this is um, a downtown basement club that is a, something of a jazz club. And um, you are conveniently located near this, uh, this place. So maybe you can work your investigation more closely, says Mr. Jones. Um, a strange and suspicious death occurred at the Washbourne a few days ago. Uh, the 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 um, deceased is named Darnell uh, Fox, I think. Hold on. Yeah, Darnell Fox, um, who s appears to have died of a heart attack. Um, but his medical, his initial medical rec records indicate that he was not at risk for such a thing. So the the company that he works for has asked you to investigate more about his death to find out if he was up to anything that would um like did he did he did he have a secret uh illness that no one else knows about or did he were there were there extenuating circumstances that brought about his death What was his name again? Darnell Fox. 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 
pretty run of the mill guy died. I mean, he could have been hit by a car, right? And the insurance company might have said, did he arrange it himself? <laughs> did he yeah. just, whose fault was it? Did he commit suicide or, or was it really the driver's, you know, accident? <clears throat> And this happened last night? Uh, days ago. Days ago. So I guess at that point, the scene of the crime's already going to be gone, so we just basically need to get the copy of the police report? Yeah, and maybe do your own investigation to look for, to find overlooked details. Yeah. Uh, I can make a call and see about getting information from the police. Okay. Okay, uh, you get on the phone, and um, after uh, going through the switchboard, you are uh, transferred to the officer assigned to the case. And uh, she picks up the phone, and she says, Officer Doss, how can I help? Hello, this is Orrin Murphy. I'm with uh, ARM. Uh, we are looking for uh, the report on the death of Darnell Fox uh, for our investigation, for insurance investigation purposes. I um, was wondering if I could have access to that, please. Uh, could you tell me, uh, it is interesting, could you tell me the reason for your interest in this case? Yes, the insurance company believes that uh, there may have been a reason for us not to pay out on his policy, and we need to investigate to make sure uh, that the policy is a valid, that the claim is valid, and that uh, uh, it, the receiving party should get their funds. I see. It seems a pretty standard, so that is fine. The case is odd, but yes. What do you mean but, the case is odd? Well, it appears Darnell was in his um, late 20s. Not common for uh, pulmonary failure, but uh, I don't know, being African American, perhaps he had some kind of other problem or something. I don't know. We are uh, waiting for the autopsy uh, to finalize, it should be today. So it's a matter of just uh, discussing if there was possibly some foul play. There was some discussion of a, st a stranger on scene, a hooded man who fled the scene. We have not yet been able to identify him. He's wearing a hoodie um, and uh, some claim to see uh, tattoos on his face. Uh, so I take it there were no Security cameras, traffic cameras in the area? Um, no, the washboard is um, disparagingly free of CCTV. Um, all right, can you loop me in when the, uh, the coroner finishes his report today? Ah, indeed. Uh, so she takes your details um, as to, you know, where to send the report or to have it ready for you to come pick up at the precinct. And um, she will um, take down your number and she'll send you a text or call you when the report is ready for you to pick up. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. Your, your file from Mr. Jones indicates that there is uh, the owner of the washboard is named Sammy Jefferson Jr. And um, so there's a point of contact at the washboard if you need it. You now have Officer Doss's name as the point of contact at the precinct. What else would you like? Officer Doss. I mean, I think, okay, now we're until we get here back from the corner. Um, I guess we want to head back. We can head down to the... Uh, the scene Start of the crime. Out. Yeah, I think that's the thing to do. If it was a crime, the scene, yeah. Mr. Assumption, <laughs> the alleged scene. 
Someone allegedly died no, here. No, there. No, we know they died there. There's no allegedly about the scene. It might still be walking around, but well, I think the they crime died. is alleged. The crime is alleged. Somebody has accused me of dying here. Right, so. Reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> um. Okay. Cool. Then. What am I doing? Okay. There we go. So yeah, so um, the so you got you got the police records that have been available at some point. It's time to hop in. And the, you want to uh, go? You want to go check out the washboard? Yeah. Yeah. Time to All hop right. in the Mr. Machine and head on over. Very good. Tell me, what time of day would this be that you're going to to go? I think it's you know fairly early in the day. You know, nine thirty. Okay. Like that. So being a, a kind of a nightclub, the washboard won't have any customers here. Uh, there may be some staff like preparing for the next night's worth of activities, etc. And um, if you so we'll say you call in advance and make arrangements to speak with Sammy Jefferson Jr. Sammy is um, when you when you meet him, you get to the washboard, and he will welcome you in. There's a uh, entrance outside, um, kind of almost in the alley. Uh, that then once uh, once you go inside, so there's uh, uh, like stanchions with some uh, cordoned off a, a row there that people would line up to go into the club, and uh, then the, beyond the door, which is a thick um, you know an alley-like door it does have a sign above it in um, mostly functional neon that says the washboard the um so this washboard is tucked uh, in the basement of this grimy brown brick building um kind of overshadowed with all of downtown's great skyscrapers. The washboard couldn't be located any lower without dropping into the sewers. <laughs> um, so you, once you go in the door, there's simply uh, like a little check spot uh, and then um, stairs that go down. And so you take those stairs down and then down a little bit further. And that eventually leads to kind of a coat check area which then leads to an opening into where the nightclub uh, has all of its tables. It has two bars um, for people to get their drinks at. And so it's, it seems though that um, the place seems to be scrubbed as if trying to rise up to the occasion of having a fleeting shot at glory. So, the front door is covered with posters heralding Martha Ellis's next gig. And from the uh, depictions on the poster, you would say Martha Ellis is in her mid fifties, red hair, curvaceous, and she's holding a microphone. Um, looks like she's singing into the microphone uh, like a jazz, like a jazz singer. And the, the poster says, um, downtown's greatest jazz singer, Martha Ellis. So that's looks like their big, that's their big uh, act that they're putting on now. So Sammy will meet you down there uh, when you arrive. He's sitting at the bar. He's got some papers and things that he's working on. Looks like maybe, you know, the books or some other, some bills or something. He's doing some, just some businessy stuff. And um, he greets you. Well, welcome to the Washburn. What brings you gents here and lady? I'll go so um, we're investigating the uh, unfortunate occurrence that happened a few days ago. Um, the death? of one Darnell Fox. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad you're here. Uh, that's a very concerning issue. I, I can't have, you know, people dying in my establishment because that would obviously lead to some, you know, bad business. Could could affect business. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure there was some nonsense going on. Uh, Martha tells me that uh, there was a hooded man that uh, somehow may have caused caused the death. Not exactly sure how, but uh, he he did flee. Martha screamed, and uh, and we came a running, me and Cyrus. And when we when we saw her on the stage next to that poor dead man. Um, I think the curtains were still flowing as he escaped out the back door. While they're talking, I'm going to walk around and just make sure that there's nobody else listening in on us or uh, just eyeballing us. Sure. So there will be some some people around, but not many as a bartender and then some some other people that are just cleaning that sort of thing. So um, you you don't see any of uh, a suspicious people or anyone trying to use drop. They're just about doing their sweeping and, you know, or mopping and that sort of thing and uh, cleaning, make sure glasses are clean and stacked, make sure bottles are full at the, at the bar for the show tonight, that sort of thing. Um, if you could, could you point me towards this back door? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, he actually will show you, so he, he's going to be at the bar here. We drop you guys into the back, just so you can kind of place yourselves to distinguish where you're going, Riffs. So I think, I think I have the mod that's me. No. All right, so I'm just going to put you here in the bar. You can figure out where you want to be. Oren, David, the hooded mystery man. Okay. Um, it's I'm having a little issue with my my map. It's all I see is black, and then it said something yeah, about right. I'm lacking permissions. Gotcha. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, Everything was fine until we got to this. There. Yeah. Now we go. Now we're good. Now we I got. Just, it. I just didn't set it, so it's like we're going to use the the blueprint for the place. So normally nice. Cyrus manages the front door. He's the bouncer. You're sitting at the bar with um, Sammy, or standing there. The back door is located here off stage. Okay, and um, that's the basic layout of the place. So you have an idea of what what it is you're dealing with here on this. We'll say that this blueprint was provided in the file from the insurance company, and we'll just use it as reference. Usually this club is uh, capable of holding 200 patrons. There are red tinted lights set the mood, but they give the play. Right now there's um, some um, fluorescent floodlights on to give the place um, a kind of a stale, um, sanitized look to it. But uh, clearly there are red red lights um, that would change the environment completely. It's kind of like when you go into a movie theater with its normal lighting is very different from when they turn on the lights to clean. So there's about 20 small circular tables scattered in front of a medium sized stage. In the back, there's a kitchen, a dressing room, storage spaces, off an office for Sammy. Um, you would be allowed backstage with an escort, um, so he's willing to take you back there once he answers your questions, etc. Okay, City of Mist uh, uses an investigation um, rule set that is not like any other game that I've ever played. 
instead of ro just role playing your questions and answers, and then may maybe like if this were like a D and D game, you'd be like, well, you can roll to see if he's lying or if he's telling you the truth, right? Uh, or you can try to persuade him to tell you the truth, or you can intimidate him. You can you can do all that kind of stuff in City of Mist without really doing anything. You just role play, and there's no real roles, and we decide otherwise. But there is an investigation move which is much more meta. Um, you would say, I'm going to investigate. I want to use this source and this method. So when you roll it and investigate, then um, you would choose, it's the core move, investigate, and um, you would assign a, a source and a method. So in this case, the source would be Sammy if you're questioning him, or if you're looking around for physical clues, you're looking for things that are out of place, then it's just investigating the scene that becomes your source. Right. And um, I will, and then what happens is you roll, and the quality of your roll will determine how many questions you get to ask me. And that role will also determine the quality of the answers that I have to give you. And so it, there's kind of this meta overall investigation um, process. And I have clues that I can give you, but I'm only gonna give them to you through an investigation role or through your own role play. But if it gets to the point of you're trying to convince or you're trying to be subtle, or you're trying to see if he's lying, that definitely is going to take an investigation overall role. And then you ask your questions and it's almost like talking to a genie. You got to be careful what you ask for, because I will probably just give you the answer. Like if you say, um, is this, you know, was this foul play? I could just say yes or no, or if you roll not so great, I may say, it could be. <laughs> so my advice to you is to ask more interesting questions that are kind of open-ended so that I am forced to give you a little bit more than just a yes or no answer. If I, if you ask a yes or no question, I'll give you a yes or no answer and that will use your clue. So when you roll, so let's practice rolling a, um, a investigate. So on your character sheet, what you want to do is and you can do this two different ways. Any of these move this applies to making any move. You can choose core move, you can choose investigate, and you can click execute move, and that opens up another window. You want to move that window aside so you can still see your character sheet and any scene tags and anything like that that's available to you, any story tags, which are on your sheet as well. And then you click on what applies to how you're going about your investigation or how you're going about the move you're trying to do. The other thing you can do is you can click your tags first. When you click on them, they click yellow. That means it will be um, a positive towards your role. If you click, notice if you mouse over your, um, your weaknesses, they'll be red. Reds will be a minus to your role. So if you click on these things, then that will make it a plus or a minus to your power tags total. If you right click on a tag, it will turn red and that will be a negative, <clears throat> okay? And so then when you begin your roll, when you hit execute, it actually pops something up for me to review your tags. You can see on the screen share that I have Oren starting in uh, his move and he's put catch overlook details. So that's a theme tag. And as soon as you use it, it's got a little leaf next to it. That means it's crispy. So it'll burn it off of your crew theme. Burn tags just become unavailable until they're restored. Generally they're restored every session. Um, but I think because online sessions go differently than face-to-face -face sessions at a table, 
I would probably refresh your crew tags a little less often. Um, and it would be generally when there is a change, uh, like moving on to the next act <clears throat> of the story. So if this is like a three act play, we'll have scenes at the, in the first act and scenes in the second act and scenes in the third act. And so from scene to scene, we won't restore uh, crew tags, but in the act to act, as you go deeper into the story, that will switch to the next act of the story and I'll refresh them at that point. All right, so when you are ready to submit, then I will um, either approve or deny tags. So in this case, Oren, uh, it was just a practice run. So in practice, what might you do, uh, be doing to do your investigation? Well, I'm going to look for any, well, first of all, do we figure out he died on the stage, right? Yes. Yep. So I'm going to look at the stage and see if there's any clues that were missed, see if there was. Okay. So that's, that's what you're looking for. You don't have to go into a whole lot of detail because your role will then determine how many questions you can ask that are in that vein, right? So right now you're just kind of setting up a generality and then you'll get more specific with your questions. So let's just pretend that that happens. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm uh, by approving everything. And then the dice are ready to roll. And so here you rolled a seven. So you can see in the chat that this is a um, investigate. Um, and you see five and a two is eight. So that's a success. And so it says you get one clue to spend. And the reason why is because there was one tag involved. So your power was one on your roll. So you'll get one clue. And what I do is I ignore the clue boxes that show up, say, waiting for player to respond. You don't type your questions in there uh, because the game just comes to a screeching halt when that happens. So um, that's been my experience with it because then I have to stop and write the answer. Uh, and I'd rather just tell it to you. So. I would suggest you keep notes of what the question was you asked and what the answer was that I gave. And that way you'll have something to look back on when you're reviewing your clues that you've uh, gathered. Okay. So I would, I would note the method, the source and what your question was and what my answer was. Um, and of course, then we can elaborate or go back and forth or what have you based on based on that. So I'm gonna, what I usually do is I delete the card that has the clue and we just look at um, something here. So it says here <clears throat> that you get one clue and you must give, uh, the, the GM MC must give you either a straight answer or a solid lead. The MC can choose also one of these complications and I'll usually check a box that um, indicates which complication it's going to happen. So um, I may want to ask a question back of you and you have to give me a solid answer. So I'm going to do that. See how that works? So then we, we role play your question and the answers and the interaction in general. Does that make sense? Case five. Yep that, make, yep, that makes sense. Good. Case files in City of Mist um, are very heavy on the investigation for the first up to several scenes where you may go gathering information. Pretty heavy on investigating. That investigation gets used a lot uh, to try to figure out what's going on and where to go next and how to begin to unravel the tapestry of this mystery. Um, but then it hits more action later. So once you figure it all out, then the action starts to kick in after that. And now you're starting using more conflict related tags, etc. So um, that's just typical. And if your character is very action oriented and not investigation oriented, then what you can do is help or hurt with your juice when someone else makes an investigation role. You can also try to change the game. Again, if you're action oriented, there are things you might be able to do to add story tags that other people can use in their investigation role. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, oh, that's, it's very fluid. 
and it's really cool. I will try to keep going around the table, but to move the spotlight to your character, but also you are free to jump in and steal the spotlight. All right, so let us begin. Um, you're looking on the stage, Oren. Let's do a real uh, investigate now. We've kind of gone through just the house. So go ahead and do a, a, a real investigate, and you may use any other tags. You can use as many tags as you think are actually appropriate and are directly related to your action. Whatever that move is, the tag needs to be directly related, and I may challenge that back to you. I may also throw in a weakness tag um, to that may apply as well. So go for it. Oren? Mm-hmm. All right, nice. So that was a 10, and you didn't use any tags. Did All you right. mean to roll yet? Yeah, I don't have any tags that are applicable. Okay. All right, so very good. You get one clue, and with a 10, that's a full success, so I don't get to do anything bad back to you. <laughs> or anything like that. So um, ask your question. And the problem is, is I have too many questions that aren't answered yet to ask a question. Like I don't have, I don't know he, how he died. I don't know, you, you know, I don't. That. Okay. So, but related to this crime scene, you're up there on stage, looking at uh, at what's going on up here. So, why don't you ask a, your question more about the scene you're investigating? What do you, what are you looking for? To learn, what do you want to learn? What Again, I, I, I don't know because I don't know how he died. Yeah, was he poisoned? Was he? Uh, I don't know. I don't know enough yeah. to even start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you guys feel the same way? Uh, similar. Uh, yeah. Okay. Something about heart condition, wasn't it? That was yeah. He yeah. Died. See, we don't even really know enough to to have anything to go on yet. Like, I think that part of it is the time that we came here, because I feel like our prime witness is Martha. And that um, would be, like, the place to start. Yeah, if yeah. she saw the guy, then maybe she has a description of the guy who ran away. But again, if he had a heart attack, it, this isn't a crime. But yeah, he did like, have a heart attack. There's nothing, there's nothing for us to investigate until we know how he died. And I think that's why that's why I want to talk to Martha first to get an idea of what she saw that would make her think that it was someone else and not a heart attack. Because if he just like dropped dead, then there's no like trace. Like we unless we can like actually get to the body to like test it for poisons or something. But we know that there's stuff that's going on that is not necessarily easily explained, so yeah, that's, Which, true, but just... that, that's true. But people die of heart murmurs they didn't know about all the time. I mean, we we can't just assume that everything's weird. Oh, we can't assume, but we need to check it out, right? I mean, we don't, we're not sent to every single death in this city. That is insured by our company. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which brings us around to. Uh, like I would like to do kind of an investigate myself, but not not the typical, you know, look on the stage or talk to people, but more to just kind of take in the space. Yeah. Um, just maybe tapping into one of my theme tags. It's I can't control it, but sometimes if I just take in a vibe, maybe I'll have a premonition or reality can bend. I can kind of see something that happened that might give us a clue in the right direction. So. Okay. So, yeah, what would you, I, yeah, that's, so this is one of the only challenges I think I have ever run into with running this game or playing in this game is like the idea, it's very different from other role-playing games. This is a very gamey part of the game where you, you really are just trying to figure out what you need to know that you don't know. And sometimes you don't even know what you don't know. So you don't know right. what to, you're right. That's kind of where you're at. So 
In this case, maybe you're going to just ask Sammy, tell me what happened. Yeah. <clears throat> and that actually is a good um, question because your success means you're going to get the story out of Sammy. If you had failed, Sammy would maybe be suspicious of you, not tell you anything, maybe lie a little bit to you, uh, sure. that sort of thing. So in this case, um, you can say, well, all right, what happened here? We don't have any information other than some dude died we got to figure out if it was, you know, did he have a, you know, cancer or what? I don't know. Um, because so far, the report is that Darnell Fox was in good health and died of um, unexplained heart failure. Okay. That is the essence of, but he died up on stage with Martha and some hooded guy who ran, who fled the scene. So that's okay. why there's still suspicious circumstances. If he had just, you know, keeled over, people would be like, oh, that's tragic. And then we'd all move on with our lives. Um, so that's why this is a little weird. So, um, all right. So Sammy explains exactly what happened that night. Well, we're just closing up. Uh, the last of the guests was heading out, and uh, I was in the back in the office. Cyrus was locking up, so he was getting what he thought was the last of the folks out. But turns out that well, this Darnell Fox character uh, was on the stage talking with Martha after all the performances were done wasn't any other staff. They were all packed up and pretty much gone. They're just, we sometimes have stragglers, you know, they like to talk to the people or whatnot. So, but otherwise, the rest of the place is kind of just still cleaning up and or gone. And Martha was on stage and talking to this fella, I guess, because she just screamed. And so Cyrus came a running, I came a running. And uh, we saw this Darnell fellow just flopped over on the stage like a like a June bug in July, just all not good anymore. And uh, so Martha said there was this man who fled. We saw the curtains were still flapping back and forth like someone had gone out in a rush. And then Cyrus claims that he did hear the back door slam shut uh, on up those stairs. So he went and checked it. It looks like it looks like somebody had come in that way. It was locked before, but uh, it looked like the lock had been, you know, pried open or something. So. so I don't know how he killed him. I don't know what he died of, but it looked like a heart attack to me. Like, he's laying there, but he was holding his chest, or his hand was near that, or something. And just dead as a doornail. Mm. I had to call the police, and had to call an ambulance, and get him out and clean up the place. Still got that strange kind of feeling around here, though. Wish that weren't the case, but definitely, you know, we, we, we need to get rid of the, you know, the taint in the air kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So where's Martha now? Well, she's uh, probably at her place. She don't come in usually till about seven at night or so kind of get warmed up, dressed up ready because she goes on you know around nine or so do you have a, a contact information for her so we can get in touch with her well she'd be sleeping right now i probably wouldn't want to be bothering her but uh why don't you all come back when she's here and 
you can talk to her then, maybe before the show or after the show. I just really don't want to upset her. You know, it's not good for business. You know, Martha, she's a definitely a rising star. I promise you will be very judicious with the time we call. Oh, all right. Uh, I, re I reckon. Um, do, all right. do, 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 do you maybe have uh, security cameras installed here? No. No, I don't. I got some clientele that uh, don't don't want to be on camera. Hmm. You know, I'd like to someday not have that kind of clientele, but business is business. Got to keep the doors open, keep the lights on. You know, Kidding. you know what I mean. Any of those might might be enemies of, of the deceased, maybe. Want any of those people enemy? that don't want to be on. I don't know. I said, I'm not sure I would know that. I don't even know this Darnell fellow is just a, just a paying patron, one of the crowd. Did they, did they always come up alone? Did, well, maybe did someone he, who. Did he come alone? Well, okay, let's find out with an investigate role. All right. So let's try. This sounds okay. Oh. Right, I need to lock it probably. Oh, there you go. Yeah, if your sheet's it's unlocked, fine. you have to lock yeah, it yeah, before yeah. you can make a move. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. Um, all right, let me know if all of those apply because I'm not sure. About at least the insurance clerk one. I don't see you uh, move yet, so. Yeah, there it is. Right. There it is. There we go. Okay. So then that pops up, and we look at too much personal information. Benevolent visage. That means you just look like a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I look like any guy, I look like a nice guy. And um, so, <laughs> Oren, how are you helping? Uh, that's a good question. Rephrase what you're at. What he was at. He's he's doing another investigation check, and he asked, "What? What did you you asked?" I asked whether um, Darnell came always alone. came alone. Whether he came alone. Um, so in this I, case, I'll, maybe I want... can look and see if there's any other staff that might know something. Sure. So this investigate is talking with Sammy. So maybe you're just trying to put Sammy at ease, like you're doing stuff next to David, you know, that's helping to calm you. You know that this kind of stance or this whatever. So you can easily just say that I am trying to help him be at ease or trust us to show that he could trust us. You got another guy walking around. Well, that was you walking around poking at stuff. So maybe you came back over because he kept being distracted by watching you looking around and so on. So that it's that's all we're doing is just come up with some general justification for you doing it, some role playing related stuff. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and approve those. And let's roll. Terrible. I don't think that's terrible. Why do you think that's terrible? Wasn't that a seven? A seven a success? Yeah. 
anything above a six. It just means oh. that I may um, get a question back. I can give you fuzzy or incomplete or part, part true or false or exposes you to danger. All right, so he tells you that, yeah, he came with some other people. There were some, there was like five, five people total in his party. Um, can we identify them in any way? Can you identify them in any way? <laughs> Actually. Um, he says, um, they all used, they, they paid for their tickets. He's looking through his books. They paid for their tickets together. Um, and they used a, a credit card of um, just one of them, which is... Do, 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 do. I wrote that down. The, um, so they're basically saying, yeah, the, the, it was just one name on there. Down and up. Too many different places to write things down. Uh. Um, so, um, uh, he says, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, he oh. goes, the credit card was under um, the name of um, Fred uh, um, Fred Williams <laughs> and it was a company card which company do you remember uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, um, it just was, it just says, um, um, Dunham and Frost. Dunham and Frost. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, do you want to maybe open a channel for those kind of things? Open so a channel? Just, um, uh, you know, create a channel for hints and stuff that, so it's in the same place for all like of us. Like crew journals oh, or case file notes actually is good for that. Sure, you want to use the Discord for that? That's fine. So if you could, uh, Fred Williams. Mm Nice. Stuff like that. All right. Um, so what do they what do they do after, you know, the incident? OK, so uh, we called the police and then uh, called the ambulance, took him away. I reckon he went to the coroner's office. Um, so, yeah, I think beyond that, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, I tried to get that poor lady home, my, my star singer, get her some, some rest, get away. I mean, you know, Gotta be traumatizing to have someone just like drop dead right in front of you. Uh, so she's uh, got to keep her going, man. This is uh, she's the most important thing to this club right now. <laughs> um. Well, I was asking about the gentleman. What did they do after? You know. What gentleman? What you mean the party he came with? Yes. Well, I reckon they left like normal. They just took themselves on up out of here. I think Darnell just stayed behind. Um. 
so none of his friends stayed with a buddy. No, but that's not unusual. We got a lot of people that meet here, so they come on their own accord. It's not like they all drove in the same car. There were five of them. So. All right. Thank you. Okay. So you can, uh, when you talk to other staff, like you find the bartender and corner him, just ask him a few questions, like off the off the cuff. Um, he tells you that um, uh, nobody knew nobody knew that guy or his friends. That you know, people come and go. It's not like they're regulars. There are some regulars, but um, I think uh, they're all like pretty young. And they were, you know, maybe going on a double date or something. And I don't know, Darnell was that 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 guy was just extra. He was, I don't know, he was going along with him. They were like maybe on double dates or something because they were all friendly. I noticed that uh, Darnell seemed to be, you know, I would say I'm not saying upset, but. He would have really liked it to have been a triple date. You know what I'm saying? Was he drinking a lot? Yes. Yes, he was. Mm. I mean, but if I was a literal fifth wheel, I might be drinking a lot too. Did he talk to any other patrons in the room? Maybe uh, got into an altercation. What that dead guy? No. No, he was. He clearly was down. He was a little down, drinking a lot, uh, but he didn't get like out of control. We would have had to kick him out. Cyrus would have taken care of that right quick. Any other questions? I can't think of anything else that we could ask anyone directly until we get more information from the coroner's report. And we can't talk to um, the singer, the, uh, right. Martha, until you know at least one or one o'clock this afternoon, something like that. Mm-hmm. I would okay. like to investigate where the back door leads to. Okay. Uh, you you can go up there. You go to the back door. Why don't you roll and investigate and see what kind of clues you can find at that at that area? Okay. Uh, I don't think I have any tags for this. Just really. Maybe. Yeah, you don't. I'm. I'm entirely like social. <laughs> well, Ooh. all right. Well, with the seven, you'll get one clue, and I may expose you to danger or give you fuzzy answers or ask you a question back. So I think I'll just choose to give you fuzzy answers. Go ahead and ask your question. What happened at the back door? What do you want to know about the back door? Um, I'd like to know where the alley that it leads to might go. Okay. So the answer to that's pretty straight up. And that is it goes out the actual other alley. So there's this building as two alleys that go on either side of it, connecting in the back with another alley. And it doesn't, it just goes out. So it does look, I will tell you that it does look like uh, there are some marks on the back door where perhaps a crowbar 
was used to get past the lock on the door. All right. Now there is one other thing that you don't know about the rules that you that you should know, and that is that an investigation technique can be to what's called look beyond the yeah. mist. <clears throat> and that you can do this because you guys are rifts. And so you're tapped into being able to see through whatever is clouding people's minds or their... In, other words, in this case, because of this campaign, you've chosen the mist to be more non-supernatural and just the social, that people just generally ignore things they don't understand. Um, and so this is your ability to just look at things for what they are. Perhaps, right? Yeah. So if you use it beyond the mist, that is a special move on your character sheet. So you switch from core moves to special moves and you do look beyond the mist. And look beyond the mist, you don't select tags, you roll plus mythos. So if you have one, two, or three themes that are mythos themes, it will add one, two, or three power to your roll, and then you roll. And then your answers will be of a completely different nature, and that will be what can your mythos see? What can you learn right. through your mythos about this, whatever it is you're trying to get more information about? So any attempt to gather more information falls under investigate. So that's also an option. So for example, Declan, you could say, you know, um, I, I'm going to try to, you know, see something that isn't a dream, or maybe it is a dream. I don't right. know anymore, but I, I want to, I'm really going to try to just see what isn't there. Right. Look beyond the mist, basically. Right. So I yep. think that's exactly what he would do. So, okay. So there's nothing to pick now. You said it was per mythos, right? Is there anything I need to click or do I just no, click execute? You just move? choose the move and it will roll because that's already a fixed power of one for you. Because you have right. one mythos theme. Got it. Here we go. Ooh. So you get um and so you can see on the card it says your mythos themes plus one. And it get, you get one clue, spend your clue one to one to ask the MC a question about the subject. So what is it that no one else is seeing? Right? That might yeah. be a good question or, I've, you know. Yeah, kind of, you know, what, what are we missing? What is the elephant in the room, so to speak? Yeah, okay. So you you get a set as you kind of, you're, you're looking around and um, while you're wandering around this area, kind of just looking for what what is it that people aren't seeing, you feel like um, the place gets more humid. It gets, um, and you just kind of have this sense that there is, um, like the ground feels softer to you, like you're walking on mud or peat. Um, and you get a, you start to actually feel it yourself, a dark loneliness. It grows more intense. There's like the ground gets literally muddy and has a bit of a low fog. And then you hear an old, sad tin whistle tune playing far away in the distance. I go towards that sound. It's toward the stage. Then... So you walk through and you feel almost like as you're walking, there's almost a sloshing sound. And the stage is now kind of, you notice that parts of the stage where the curtains are, the curtains are like, are like Spanish moss. Kind of hanging down. And you see on the stage, Darnell kind of flicker and fade into like this 
see-through ghost of a of a corpse and then everything fades and comes back to normal but what is normal yeah so uh -huh. hmm okay I'm going to take a seat in one of these tables okay. and um, pull out one of my little insurance investigators notebooks and try to write and sketch down really quickly all my thoughts of everything that just, just happened so I can relay it to everybody. So the humidity, the peat, the loneliness, the, the mud on the floor, the Spanish moss hanging on the drapes. Uh, seeing Darnell appear as a, but, but definitely as a corpse. Like he is without a like chance. Like as he fell. Like, it's, right. like it's probably the very place where he fell. Right. So I see exactly where he died. Okay. Got it. And I'll make a note of that on the stage too. Right. Good. Um, all right. Anything else that you want to, I mean, you can always come back, return to scenes, ask new questions when you get more information that makes you think, well, what did happen? You know, you always go back and forth. It's now just a time of whether you want to continue here. Is there more you want to know here? Or do you just want to move on and then get the coroner's report, for example, or something like that? Yeah, I, I think moving, I think definitely moving on from here, I think there's, I think we've tapped the vein of what we can do for the moment at this place. I'm sure we'll be coming back, but for right now, until we talk to Martha, there's, I can't, I can't see any reason, unless anybody else wants to take, take a crack at anything. Um... Do maybe I look beyond the veil on the actual place of death, but then again, I think we got most of what we could out of it. Let's move on. Let's keep this going. Is anyone able to talk to spirits or anything like that? Hmm. It doesn't sound like a. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, I can read threads of fate not actually talk to spirits but maybe see kind of trying to investigate what happened once i know where it happened and not... you reverse you know like i can see uh the whole thread right so if, That's if the point you see it. where the thread right. ends you can pick up the thread and see you know trace it backwards what led to that maybe Yes, I'm like. Excuse me. I mean, yeah, I can see it uh, where it ended, and as I am uh, something of an expert on cutting those threads, I think it would be easier for me to understand what happened. Yes, maybe. Yeah, do you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. Go for it. Go for it. You got three too, right? Let's see. No, it's not. I'm, it's gonna be an investigate, not a see through the mist. Oh, okay. Beyond the mist. Mm -hmm. Right, because I actually have stuff that helps that. What? Okay. Oh, so yeah. hold hold on. Are you using your ability of the fates in order to investigate? Yeah. Then Could that I? would be a see beyond the mist. That's what that is. If that's what you're trying to do. Like, I'm going to find that thread and I'm going to trace it back a little bit to find out what happened. That would be a I CB mean, on the mist because you're using your mythos to see the, oh, oh. see the crime. All right, let's, let's do it that way. I don't mind. Because you can do, you know, things that are physical and social and research on the internet or whatever. You don't necessarily use your mythos to do that, though maybe some abilities your mythos gives you may assist in those kinds of activities, right? Like maybe you have a keen eyes because your mythos is, you know, what a hawk man or so, I don't know, whatever. And so you can use tags to help in your investigation in the real world, so to speak. 
Um, but if you're using all of your mythos to tell you, like, I want to try to find this thread and trace it back, then that's pretty much, there's nothing about the physical world that you're actually investigating. So, or, or nothing social, you're not, right? All right? So then that would be a see beyond the mist because that's all mythical. Yeah, but then I wonder where would written the threads of fate come in? I mean, I don't mind. I'm gonna do the look beyond the mists, but I'm just thinking. I mean, it that's would... an an actual ability, like it's permission to see a thread. But we can come back to that later. Why am I rolling threes all the time? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. Uh. So you're, the fates are like, there's something that, um, that, there's something that isn't right. You feel that, that there should be, um, a thread you could find and it's, it, it's been removed. Like it's gone. Oh, that'll give me some anxiety. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Um, you kind of see David going completely, well, I don't, I wouldn't say white, but whiter than he already is. <laughs> um, and he kind of, you know, a, a lone drop of sweat <laughs> rolls down his face and goes, oh, this is, this is not right. What happened here? It's, it's not supposed to be. The thread, it's... He, he catches himself. Life doesn't just end like this. Which you all know, of course, it does. Yeah. So your anxiety is makes you very... Also, you feel the sadness. You feel the, the deep anguish. that he's just lost, he's gone. So, um, you, yeah, this is, if this were a heart attack, it'd be easy, this would be easy. So that's your big takeaway from even your failure of trying to look beyond the mist is that there's something very wrong. He, the guy didn't just fall over from a heart attack. You quickly become suspicious that there was something, some force at work to kill him. And it's not following protocol. <laughs> oh, Orna walked over. <laughs> you all right, mate? You look a little pale there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. David looks like he had that heart attack just now. <laughs> uh, uh, things are not. The heart supposed attacks are to... contagious. Everybody, get out! <laughs> <laughs> Th things are not supposed to to be that way. This is this is wrong. This is beyond wrong. Whatever did this, we we need to find it. So you're saying it's not a normal heart attack? Um, uh, I, if it was like, I wish, Darnell would wish it was. All right. So now I want to walk over and talk to the bouncer. Okay. Generally, these guys I'm gonna do one. Cyrus. Let's let me just ask you something. I know what you do for a living. You assess threats. You watch people come in and out of here. You remove threats when they become a problem. This guy that supposedly had tattoos on his face with the tattoos and the hoodie, did he not register to you as dangerous when you let him in? I did not let him in. What are you talking about? I don't know. Uh, 
What you mean? Uh, he broke in the back door, apparently, while I was uh, locking up in front here. The back door is always locked. I mean, it has a fire escape, uh, you know, push bar, but uh, it is locked from the outside. You cannot get in. All right. So does the back door, does the evidence on the back door support that? Um, it does, yes. It seemed that um, somebody went at the handle with a crowbar. Yeah. Well, maybe we should go to Darnell's place and look for any uh, any evidence there. Mm -hmm. Because we can figure out maybe why somebody's trying to kill him now at this point. Okay, yeah, so they, they were not trying at all. Roll, um, you can roll and investigate with Cyrus and just see, uh, apply some tags to that you think would help you get information out of Cyrus. Ooh. And I'm assuming that you, um, that you're all taking pictures and whatever. Oh, yeah. Notes and whatnot um, of different things. So, all right, go ahead and roll that. Nice. Wow. All right. So he tells you, he goes, uh, look, I was locking up up front when I heard Martha scream. She says that this uh, dead man uh, asked her to... Uh, to meet her after the show. So I assume they're talking, but when I arrived, Martha was there, the dead man was on the ground, and she claimed someone ran. I uh, I went to look and I only saw that indeed there was someone in the alley. I got all the way up the stairs to the alley and he looked back at me as he was running. Um, he's not a big man, but he's uh, covered in face tattoos. That's all I could see. Black hoodie over his head, tattoos. like face tattoos, like all over. I mean, tribal, were they pit? Could you make them out of what they look like? Uh, no, I did not see much, but it was, it was definitely face tattoos. And uh, you, you don't miss that on people. Well, no, but uh, did they look Asian, Syriac? Yeah, oh really? no, no, no! He was, he was, uh, he, yeah, he was uh, definitely a, a white dude. Had, uh, I think he was probably bald, though it looked like. Okay. All right. So, um. Yeah, anybody got, if anybody didn't have anything, I'd... I think yeah, we're I... here unless we've got something else that we can think of. Yeah, I think it's point. I think it's a good place to stop yep. here because we're going to go to Darnell's next time. and Or Darnell and Martha and... Yeah, I'm going to give you the coroner's report when you get back to the... On your way back to the office, you can swing by, pick up the package waiting for you. The coroner's report says that Darnell Fox died of an unexplainable heart failure. His tox screen came back clean. His blood work came back clean. He wasn't, he was intoxicated, um, but not of a level that was enough to be fatal. So the coroner's report simply um, it declares the cause of death, unexplained heart failure. Um, his medical records uh, have been reviewed by the authorities and uh, are clear that he was not the carrier of any particular health condition that would cause a problem that would be related in any way. It looked like he was healthy and died of heart failure. Died of a broken heart. Yeah. And so that's where we will end. Let's do a 
closing credits move. So we have a um, end of session move that goes into the chat. And this is a reflection moment where you can choose one of these three things. And in some cases, choose more than one of the three. So how has the crew grown this session? You can recover a burnt crew power tag or mark attention on a crew theme or which character had the most meaningful interaction with your character this session and add a help or hurt based on that interaction or which of your themes is under the most stress did any of those themes come into play and if it collapses in other words did you get to mark any crack or fade and if it collapses write down um, what you think the new aspect would show up in its place if it disappeared. So those are your three options for end of credits. Probably the third one doesn't apply because you're just getting started, but maybe one of the other two. So let's just go around the table real quick. Let's start with Declan, you first. Well, obviously the, the team has taken one step towards being cohesive. Um, we we went to this first scene and nobody really got in anybody's way or stumbled over each other. Everybody kind of took their turn, you know, I'm focusing on this, I'm focusing on that. So there's, there, we took one step into being an actual team. Right. Okay. So then do you want to mark attention on the crew theme? Yeah, I think that'd be a, a good one. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And that will add one attention to the crew theme. When it reaches three, it will reset back to none and add um, a bonus. You can either choose a theme improvement or a new power tag for it, etc. So I'll let you upgrade the theme as you go. All right. Got it. David, tell me about you. I keep forgetting that I'm David. <laughs> uh, still in Steven country. All right. Um, I'm going to have to agree. Yeah, that uh, this is this was more of a team building exercise. Like we are uh, trying to become an actual team. And um, yeah, we've been actually okay. managing it. Very good. <laughs> All right. Mark attention on the crew theme then. Uh, Oren. What's your perspective? Or I guess Richard. <laughs> I'm going to go with. Uh... Yeah, I think I have to go with that as well, just because I don't think the other ones fit. Didn't really have any meaningful interactions with others yet. Yeah, right? and yep. I don't think any of my themes are under strain so i feel like that's the only one that works okay and all right very good go ahead and mark attention as well that's going to flip to an improvement i think in one session there you go greer pick shanks tell us what you think as we're geeking out during the credits yeah like um just from we spent a lot of time just kind of like growing um, or just like thinking about the dynamic between characters and just like how they kind of like play into each other at the beginning. And that yep. was like a lot of the time in this session. I yep. think they're <laughs> like fleshing that out and then like getting a feel for how like the crew dynamic is like likely to go, I suppose. Yeah, good. All right. So you can mark attention on the crew theme as well. And then I'm going to kind of end up today with bringing up what we'll start with next session. And that is a monologue. So one of you can volunteer to give the opening monologue of the of the episode. And when you do that, that's a move you will make on your character sheet that when you execute it, so after your monologue, I'll tell you, okay, go ahead and execute the monologue move. It will give you um, attention 
to your least attention theme as a reward for giving the monologue. So the monologue is basically a recap of the previous session and a, um, a, a lead in to your current situation. So it's, it's like catching you up. What? Basically, it's like last time on the ARM or whatever, right? The arm of the company. Um, then you, you lead in and it does basically just that same kind of episodic, this is what happened last time and it's little cutscenes of things that were important. So you may use, refer to the clues, the answers you got, the formation of the team, etc. You just write a little couple of paragraphs or something so you can read that as the opening monologue or off the top of your head, it doesn't really matter. Um, when I do that, I usually prepare a monologue in case no one volunteers and then I get the attention. So, um, but no, um, if, if one of you wants to say, yeah, I'll do the, the opening monologue and I've got one ready and then we, you read it off and we begin our session. So that'll lead us right into the next. So like you may end your monologue with, and now, you know, the, like you're narrating, right? Or something. Yeah, know? sure. And now the crew arrives at Darnell's apartment or whatever. Okay. Uh, however, okay. and then you, you kind of just like lead into the first scene. So that is uh, what we'll start with next week. So good job. Um, so we've had, because we had a few characters at the beginning and some challenges trying to come up with good character concepts and getting them all lined out, um, that bled into this session as well. I think we had a really good session talking about characters and getting them to start fitting in. This game is very good about creating those webs between characters it gives you kind of forces you to have reasons why you would get along or even have a little bit of conflict some of you have hurt with each other initially as well so it's really cool that it creates a little bit of maybe dramatic attention or some potential dramatic attention in the future um and so we spent a lot of good time on that and then just got kind of introduced to the initial nonsense you'll be dealing with over the next few sessions trying to solve this strange thing Got it. Okay. So All we'll right. see you next week. Uh, wait, not next week. Next week, I will be in uh, California on vacation. Uh, and I don't, and I don't think I will be, uh, be able to jump on a session. However, we can do some discord stuff. Um, I'll, I'll have time to kind of answer questions or give you more information. If there's some things you want to do, on the side about your character or things like that. Um, I'll also reward characters if you write some extra um, narratives, like journal entries or or flashbacks or things like that. I will give your characters attention for that as well. So if you're explaining cool. more about, like you want to write some kind of a little vignette about your character doing something in the past, uh, by all means, or something you're doing off on the side, you know, a lot of times the, the heroes will split off real quick and they'll do a little side thing while they're trying to investigate. That would be a, really a part of the downtime move. When you do a downtime move, it'll give you things you can do while you're having downtime, which is we're taking a break from the case for a second. And so for my downtime, I'm not taking a break from the case. That's one of the options, right? I'm still yeah. investigating, so I get three clues. And so here's what I'm going to ask, right? Or I'm so like you could, could we could call downtime right now and we'll address that right after your monologue leads us into the session. We'll address the results of the downtime or we can just do downtime in the discord. If you have time to chat and you like to chat between sessions, uh, I always keep an eye on those for when things happen there. OK, Ooh. well, there right. we go. Welcome. And um, I think Pig Shanks, you're going to do a little bit of writing too, right? You've got to summarize some stuff for us, gather some notes together. Yeah. Does that I've sound got, about right? I was taking minutes, basically. <laughs> wow. Now there's some detail. Look at that. Yeah. I was doing some similar stuff, but hers are probably much better than mine. Uh, I'm, <laughs> like I'm going to stop making notes now. You've got. <laughs> <laughs> nice. She's got timestamps, freaking timestamps. All right. Like now I said, her notes are better than mine. 
That's, that's awesome. That is friggin' cool. All right, that's great. And people can use that. So whoever's going to write the monologue can pull information right out of this. That's, I'm just not seeing it. Where is it? Oh, she put uh, it's, it in, it's in the uh, Discord. N O P T case oh, Discord. file notes in Discord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Knights of Pain Town. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fantastic, you guys. All right, guys. Hope you, hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, feel free to message me in Discord if you have any questions or want to do anything like that. I'm happy to answer. I keep an eye on it closely. You got you it. You guys take care. We'll see you next uh, week after. Week or after next. Whatever. Yeah. All right. <laughs> have a good take one. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye. Have a good one, y'all. Bye-bye.